history. I'm sorry, we're not going to do a lecture today, are we? No, we're not. No, we're not. <laughs> All I for that. So, um, I, obviously, I'm going to talk a bit about FinTech or one or two aspects of technology. Let, let me just make um, a couple of comments about the economy. Um, I mean, everyone knows we were the ones who created the uh, unfortunate phrase poor and poor, uh, which is now in the lexicon. Uh, very interesting to see the federal government finally come out and say something about poverty. <laughs> so we hold it our breath. And those of you who saw what the Stephen Governor said, so of course we, we've always said, uh, well, we said five to seven percent, then we said six to eight percent, then Bismarck said seven to eight percent, and now yesterday uh, the governor came out and said double digits. <laughs> So he set a bar. It's the first time I've ever, this is chat, there's no press here, right? No, no. <laughs> so, I mean, we're being quite hard on the CBN, sort of saying, you stand up every time you give the uh, state of the nation of the CBN and how wonderful you're doing and you're restricting rights and no toothpicks, and et cetera. <laughs> and yeah, they, we continue to get poor and poor. I've never heard the CBN acknowledge that. Finally, yesterday, the governor acknowledged that. So hopefully, these are positive signs. We'll see what the new cabinet does. So, but I, I also wanted to say, I mean, um, I didn't know you were on the board of InterSwitch. And it must be an incredible pleasure. Very exciting. So people, you need interest, we talked about FinTech. So Mitchell was doing FinTech before we had the word FinTech. Absolutely. And, and InterSwitch is the greatest FinTech, not in Nigeria, in Africa. And we should all know that. And, and it's, I know people are aware of this. I mean, I think it's fairly common knowledge because it's a bit in the press and you know, the things are going really public, but it's worth more than almost every bank in the country. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. exactly. So, so it's just an incredible success story. It's one of my favorite clients. Uh, and so it's fantastic. So, but what I thought I would talk about FinTech, I mean, heard you can talk about sort of overview on it. I have, um, like all people like me, I have teams, great teams that make uh, fantastic slides. <laughs> Which all get. And one of the things that we've been talking about is just a whole set of technologies uh, that are going to transform uh, North Africa because the need for us, the need to leapfrog is, is so great. And in fact, last week, you might have seen we opened our experience center, and I hope many people have a chance to come with it with one of their companies on that. But these are the 10 technologies that uh, PwC is putting forward, augmented reality drones, et cetera. And I have a presentation that I will um, share with everyone, but we don't have time to talk about all 10 technologies. I'm only going to talk about blockchain, okay? And the reason I'm going to talk about blockchain is we, we've said for over two years now it is such a critical uh, technology for Nigeria, and Africa, but Nigeria in particular, because what is blockchain about? It's about um, having a ledger that's shared so people have the same view of the truth on that. And it was it's, as a technology, what it means is it really helps to establish trust in a place where trust is low. And one place in the world where trust is low is Nigeria. So the value of blockchain to Nigeria is very, very high. And here's some use cases, et cetera, on that. But I want to start out again. We're talking about interest switch. Um, so people might think of blockchain as being something that is in the future. But in fact, interest switch is one of those leaders in blockchain here. They announced uh, a blockchain supply chain financing solution. Let me explain this for a couple of minutes because it really shows what's so critical to giving finance and um, fintech and how it works. So, what was happening, this is, was done with, maybe I don't know if you've heard at board level, but with, with, particularly with Mr. Dangote's company, you would have suppliers to Dangote, so then, and they would not get paid for 60 or 90 days because Dangote has the power to do that. So then Dangote would issue a um, advanced payment guarantee. So in theory, the company, this SME, could go to the uh, bank and get working capital from the bank. Because right? they can't survive 60 or 90 days with no cash. In practice, what happened was the bank couldn't necessarily uh, verify the authenticity of it. 
They didn't know whether the SME had taken it to another bank and already borrowed against it. Once they accepted it, bank processes were very cumbersome and time consuming, so it wasn't working. So InterSwitch and Vancovia and a number of the banks announced uh, last, um, I think November, a system where now all of this is put in the blockchain. So you have long-term suppliers in SME, they supply some goods, there's an invoice issued, the invoice is on the blockchain, uh, you don't even need the advanced payment guarantee because you know people can see that there's a valid invoice that because it goes on the, on the blockchain and then Vancovia verifies it's a valid invoice and then the bank can lend against it. No other bank will lend against it because they know they can see the previous bank is lending against it. So you can see why it's so critical to have a common ledger. And it's, if you think about your life, so it's good to see you shake. Shake it. Where did you go to university? You went. You went to university. Which college? Oh, I went to Baylor. <laughs> <laughs> How do we know you went to Baylor? Because <laughs> I said so. She was it. Yeah, with it. So what would happen if we showed up at Baylio and then never heard of shit? What would you do? I'll show them the fridge drops. Okay, but you have some right. Yeah. So but if you think about it for a moment, your whole life, it's their ledger that's saying that uh, you, you would have, uh, uh, you know, you went to Oxford. You got a degree. <laughs> <laughs> so I learned things. Right, so but it depends. You think, so if you think about it, all of your degrees are uh, uh, the fact that you have your Y, which I won't go to that controversy, but you have all these private ledgers that ge govern your life. Right. Uh, so you have your university degrees, you have your professional associations. So I know people like CIBN, people like um, you know, there must be a professional body for the arbitrators. Yes, yes, trust me, you do the Right, etc. All of this is governed by private ledgers that people hold somewhere. You might have seen the press a few weeks ago that said that the authorities said if you lose your wife certificate, you're out of luck. Like, what does that do? Right. So, <laughs> the blockchain is so valuable for us is because we create a, an indelible record, we know who's changed the record, we know who has the rights to change the record, and you can verify that. In fact, one thing we're trying to do at PwC is start some kind of credential service that would serve the um, uh, uh, university community, but it would also serve the professional bodies, you know, IOB, CIBN, the lawyers, the, the medical professionals, all of these bodies you have to do continuing professional education every year. How is that verified? On that. And that is why this is such a critical technology for, um, for Nigeria. Now, in terms of, I uh, gave the interest switch example. So, how many people in this room have ever used the term Nigerian customs and innovation in the same sentence? <laughs> 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 don't think too many of you. In fact, the first blockchain um, uh, real use case in Nigeria was the uh, customs people. And this was for their, and you can see when they have the document, you can see how it all, it all fits together. This was not for the uh, import or export of goods, it was for the uh, excise tax. So excise tax, all manufacturers need to register for excise tax, but excise tax is only above zero for um, alcohol and tobacco. But anyway, you can see what happened here is you have a blockchain cloud, and then you have all the different parties that are here. So you've got the, the agent for the, uh, for the company, you've got the bank, you've got the CAC office, uh, you've got the customs inspector, etc. And they're all now linked in one uh, cloud, in one uh, blockchain, and they're all updating according to the permissions that they have to do it. And this was highly successful. They went down to something that took 12 to 18 months to two physical visits, 20 documents, one month on that. So that's the power of that. So I want everyone, and of course, Legal professions are going to be transformed by blockchain as well. I'm sure we would be talking about that. And that. So we really think this is a critical uh, technology for Nigeria and uh, a lot of people support it. Okay, so I hope I have three more minutes because I want to do something um, slightly different. I want to talk about cryptocurrency, okay? Why that's so critical. So I'm going to give two for a thousand dollars. And I have <laughs> sometimes people. Hungry, I, I hope it's going to multiply or something. <laughs> I, I hope it's some magic trick or something. <laughs> so sometimes people come to me and say, you must be so wealthy. And I say, no, 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 you, know, you invest, they say invest in this, invest in that. I say, no, no, I have a very simple financial life. 
If I get painted, I send it to my ex-wife. So I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> so this is why I love Echo Bay because of their Pan African uh, uh, you know, ambition. So I have 1,070 Naira in my Echo Bank account. So 1,000 Naira plus 65 to get it out of the ATM. Shuko has 1,000 yeah. Naira. What's the difference between the 1,000 Naira that he has and the 1,000 Naira that I have? I won't ask anyone to put anyone on the spot. The difference is, again, the 1,000 Naira in Echo Bank depends on Echo Bank's private ledger. Okay? So if Echo Bank says I don't have a thousand naira, I don't have a thousand. You can have that fight. Some of you might have had that fight. The money doesn't go to the ATM. Or you're supposed to receive something. How many times do you win that fight? Not very often. Shupo has the thousand naira. It doesn't depend on anyone else, and it doesn't depend on any ledger. Now, why is that important for cryptocurrency? Because cryptocurrency is like a thousand naira. It's not like the the uh, Echo Bank account. The reason that cryptocurrency is such a threat is because all of a sudden now people, in a sense, can have control of their own financial situation on that. So you've got, you know, if you've got a cryptocurrency, and of course, if you hold it in a wallet, you've got a different thing, but if you hold it yourself, it's your money, okay? Now, let's push it slightly further. Has everyone here heard of Libra, right? Okay, so what is the battle? When you talk about this conference, you like to talk about regulation. Uh, and this, to me, is going to be the regulatory battle for the next decade. So if you think about money, so I was in this country four or five years before I learned that the pound used to be worth less than the naira. Mm -hmm. like I, I mean, I arrived here with one six, or one, one twenty or something. One to the dollar? Okay, I get that. That's like the yen. It's like a hundred to the dollar, et cetera. And I was here four or five years, and someone said, no, no, back in the 90s, the Naira was worth more than the, uh, the, 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 the Naira was worth more than that. Now, of course, that sort of inflation is a tax on the bottom of the pyramid, right? Um, and we have grown up in a world, we've all lived in a world where the authorities, the central authority, creates money. Some people like the United States create money and inflation, consumer inflation is only 2%. Some people in Nigeria, you create money and consumer inflation is 10% or higher in some years, or 12% or 17%. But no matter what happens, you know, it's a tax at the bottom of the pyramid, it's controlled by a central authority. Now if someone comes along and says, we're going to create a technology where a private actor can create money. Uh, and of course, you know, the dollar's not backed by anything, the dollar's not backed by anything. That, you know, for those of you who don't know, I'm, I mean, I love Americans, but I'm not American, I'm Canadian. The Canadian dollar's <laughs> not backed by anything. And now someone comes along and says, okay, we've watched central authorities create money. We've watched central authorities you know, control it through, you know, they control it through the ledgers of the central bank and the banking system. We're now going to create something that uh, is by private actors. And of course, if you create money, I mean, that's got to be the greatest power in the world to create money. And then we've had lots of smaller actors created, and in the last month we've had one of the biggest actors on the planet. So if you think about, I think in 10 years, it is inevitable that we all use, um, and I don't know if I use the term cryptocurrency, we all use digital currency. The fight is going to be, do we use a centralized authority digital currency, so digital Naira, or do we use a private actor's digital uh, currency like Libra or some other, and I think that's going to be fun for the ages. And I do think the Shupo's point, the CBN is not going to necessarily handle this very well. Yeah. It is such a threat to the existing financial order. So something to think about. So let me stop there. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, you know, this presentation is available to everyone. It has some interesting, actually, one just one quick technology. I just because I thought it was so cool. Thirty more seconds. Yeah, we're talking about finance. I, this is, I think, I think the team put it here because it's a, a African technology. This to me is very cool. So this is in the AI section, so artificial intelligence. So what distinguishes artificial intelligence from just process automation, robotics, is in this, you're supposed to learn, right? You know, so you have data, and the system updates itself. This is an app to diagnose um, uh, asphyxia for infants, right? 
And what it does is it listens to the infant in their normal crying, processes that. Then, then what happens if sound, if they get abnormal sounds, it will sound the alarm. So I just think this is incredible technology. It will save tens of thousands of lives in Africa. But it's just, you know, one taste of so many of these technology things that are so critical for Africa. So let me stop there. God bless Nigeria. Brilliant. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. David. Um, I know that on this...